Hey there friends, I'm Geology Professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Wanted to put together a quick video to talk about an earthquake that occurred within the last 24 hours or so. This one, a magnitude 6.0 quake in Greece in the Aegean Sea, just east of the island of Crete. So this is the location right here where you can see the big orange dot and its position in the Mediterranean uh, adjacent to the Aegean Sea. This again was a magnitude 6.0 quake that happened on May 13th at about 1.51 a.m. local time. Luckily, no damage or casualties reported at all. There was an initial uh, report, in a, well, an initial uh, tsunami alert that was prompted for the area, but a tsunami did not... Um, commence. There was no tsunami associated with earth, this earthquake. And you might ask yourself why. So let's go ahead and dig into the data a little bit here and explain why this earthquake occurred, where it did, and what some of the di dynamics are. So let's start off with, um, let's start off with a look at the, just the tectonic region here. So here's roughly where the earthquake epicenter was located, just east of this island here, this large island of Crete. Um, and you can see the red line here this is a subduction zone so this is where one plate the African plate which is moving to the north is pushing down and beneath this small micro plate the Aegean plate and so that subduction where one plate dies beneath the other <clears throat> triggers a lot of earthquake activity the friction along that fault or along that plate boundary in that margin uh, over time that um, manifests itself as earthquake activity. That energy is released as earthquakes. So you can see the relative motion of the two plates. They are in collision. And so we have this tectonic plate boundary here. Let's check out the data from the quake um, and explain why there was not a tsunami. So the first thing to note is the depth. So 74 kilometers is pretty deep. It's not as deep as they, they can be. Um, but for many of the earthquakes we see, in this part of Europe, typically we see much shallower depths. And so of course, as the earthquakes are deeper, that energy takes a lot longer to move its way up through the crust and up to the surface. So the effect of that earthquake at the surface on people and infrastructure tends to be dissipated a little bit. So one reason we didn't have much in the way of uh, any casualties or anything was the, the depth of this earthquake. Sometimes at subduction zones, we see earthquakes that are hundreds of kilometers in depth. So that one was nearly, not nearly as deep deep as something on that scale, but this was still considerably deeper than a lot of the shallow crustal quakes that we see in the region. The second reason we didn't get a tsunami is um, if you look at the beach ball here, this is a classic pattern for a strike slip fault. So this earthquake we had here in Greece in the uh, Mediterranean Aegean Sea region was on a strike slip fault that was either striking uh, southwest northeast or northwest southeast, depending on uh, which one of these two faults is accurate here. And so we can see that the pattern here tells us it was mostly strike slip motion and so if the fault is producing motion that is lateral or horizontal um, and not vertical that's not really going to displace any water it's not going to generate a tsunami so a couple things to see here the mechanism and the movement of the fault was not conducive to generating a tsunami the depth of the earthquake in conjunction with its magnitude this is kind of at the low end of what you'd expect to see in terms of a, a earthquake that can actually break the surface underneath the ocean and generate a tsunami. So because it was a little bit on the weak side in terms of generating a tsunami and somewhat deep or at least moderate in terms of depth, uh, those are reasons we did not see this generate a tsunami in the region. Um, there was a lot of people that felt it though. So if we go down to the, the did you feel it map, um, Actually, let's go back real quick. Looks like we had about 900 responses here. And this, again, is just on the USGS site. So you'd expect a lot more people felt it than that. But 900 people actually went into the USGS site to report their experience. You can see the epicenter here with the star. Uh, and then the little blocks here are just, you know, on this island here, uh, it looks like we had about 16 responses and then the relative intensity level. So based on their experience, how intense the shaking was. And obviously as you get further away, those die down a little bit. So only like level three or so out here, but it looks like it was felt uh, not just on Crete, uh, but some of these adjoining islands as well. I did see a report that they felt it, yeah, down here into Egypt as well. So it looks like we have good data here 
here to suggest it was felt across the Mediterranean in Egypt over here in Israel. So you can kind of get the, the full extent of it here. Sometimes when you see reports that are way far away, like this one way out here, um, and it's just based on one response, you know, you can maybe kind of weed those out a little bit. It looks like there's one way over here um, in this area in Macedonia. Um, probably maybe not reputable, but you never know. But definitely these ones here where we're seeing uh, multiple responses and more clustering, uh, that, that's the real deal. That's actual shaking that is being observed and felt in that region. So there's our sort of felt report. And we had again up to level uh, six or so on the intensity scale, which is light damage, but fairly strong shaking. So people definitely would have felt this quake in areas near the epicenter, but very minimal uh, to no damage, it would seem at this point. Um, okay, so, and just looking at the, um, a different data set here from the Mediterranean area, you can see that earthquake there shown in red. Um, this is again the subduction zone. So this is right along the subduction zone. And this is where we see actually the bulk of the quakes in this region. Some of you uh, might have been aware of the big uh, seismic swarm, the earthquakes taking place just northeast of Santorini in the Aegean Sea in the earlier part of this year. But the bulk of the quakes we see are in this region along this subduction zone. And to illustrate that a little bit, I pulled up a, a paper here that shows um, historic seismicity from the year 1900 to 2017 so this is 117 years worth of earthquake data now this is selective selecting uh quakes over four and a half but you can see the bulk of those quakes right along that subduction zone there and then as you work back into the gnc they're a bit more scattered but definitely a, a stronger clustering here right at that tectonic interface or that that plate boundary there um Okay, and then just, I thought it would be fun since this earthquake also occurred uh, in the Aegean Sea and fairly close to an area that had been in the news recently, and that is uh, this area northeast of Santorini. I thought I would just do a quick little uh, update and circle back to that. So obviously the, the, the big seismic swarm of quakes that prompted evacuations and, and quite a bit of alarm there in this part of the Aegean Sea, uh, that's dissipated. But to just so you see where we're at now, they are still having earthquakes in that area. So this is um, a two week period. This is all of May. So these are all the quakes in May. And while that may look like a lot of earthquakes, let's, you know, I think if you look back at what we were having in February, you could see that this is a, a definitely a drop in terms of total number of earthquakes. There's a few bigger ones in there. There's a 4.6 from just a few days ago. But the bulk of the quakes in here are below what would be felt. These are ones, these are 2.2s. Uh, these are generally pretty small quakes happening. So the quakes are still occurring, um, but they're diminishing in size and strength as we move forward through time. And we would expect that trend to continue, at least, you know, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and then, you know, at some point things could shift, but but who knows? Uh, anyway, so that's just a quick update on this earthquake in the Aegean Sea uh, that folks felt. And so I thought I'd put together a quick video in case they were interested in learning a little bit more about the data behind that. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your support of the channel. And we'll see you next time. Take care.